I encourage you right now, if in your heart, when we say come Lord Jesus, you feel some kind of way, get that right with God. Yes. If you can't say come Lord Jesus with confidence, check it. Yes. Something has your heart. Yes. Because no wife doesn't, really, doesn't want her husband not to come and get her. If you're really in love with him, you want to see him. You want to be with him. You want to be where he is. So we thank you right now, Lord Jesus. That soon and very soon, we're going to see your face. Soon and very soon, we're going to be with you where you are. Soon and very soon, there'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more pain. There'll be no more hurt. There'll be no more crying. There'll be no more poverty. There'll be no more fighting. There'll be no more wars. There'll be no more family division. But everywhere we go, we'll be surrounded by the love of God. So we say, Come, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, right now, we remember all you have done for us. Everything you did, Lord Jesus, was for us. For you was wounded for our transgression. You was bruised for our iniquities. And by your stripes, we were healed. Therefore, we are healed. And we're healed right now from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Right now, I decree that we have peace with God. We are the righteousness of God. All is well with us and God. We have peace with God. God loves us. Say, God loves us. God loves us. Now come close and say, God loves me. God loves me. And I know it. And I know it. I take the bread right now and I eat all of it. Come, Lord Jesus. We just waiting on you. Yes. Come when you come, Lord. We're going to live and we're going to do what we're supposed to do to you come, but we're waiting for you to come. He said, Behold, I come quickly, but come on, Lord. Your bride is ready. We take the cup right now, which is the cup of the blessing. This is the cry of the, the bride, the cry of the church. Come. Jesus said he wouldn't even partake in, 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 in communion anymore until he, he do it again with us in heaven. My Lord. He told him, This is the last time I do this until we all get together. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood. It was poured out for us. You shared your blood for all of our sins, and because of you, we stand before God holy. Me, holy? Yes. You, holy. You stand before God blameless. Me, blameless? Yes. You, blameless. Pastor, you know what I did last night? Blameless. Pastor, you know what I did this week? Holy. <laughs> we take the cup now, we drink all of it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Say, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This time, young people, you're dismissed. My Lord. I can only imagine, man. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine, man. I can only imagine. Pastor, do you deserve to go? No. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I love you from Jesus. Can you imagine just standing before the king? Bless you, Father. Father, we love you, praise you, thank you right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Father. Father, we thank you for this another opportunity to gather around your word. Blessed are our eyes for the sea. Bless our ears for the hear. Bless our minds and our hearts for they understand all things.
as we hear, we know the voice of our shepherd. And we're here right now, Lord. Speak to your people. Grace me with the anointing to speak it. And grace the people with the anointing to hear it. And we bind any demonic spirit that will try to handle the flow of the word. Satan, we curse you right now in Jesus' name. We decree that the word of God shall free voice. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's go to uh, Mark 16, verse 15. And I'm going to need you to work with me there. I, have, like, I might just do one of them, but just the diagram. Just stay with me. All right, Mark 16, verse 15. Seeing Jesus, man. Seeing Jesus. But pal, I thought 2020 vision was about clarity concerning my call. We got to see Jesus first. Amen. Amen. I thought 2020 vision was about clarity concerning my finances. You got to see Jesus first, baby. Yes. We want to see everything with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why everything ain't happening because you're not seeing Jesus. Amen. All right. Now, what time we got? 11.52. All right. Give me a few minutes now. I want to get this in, okay? All right? Let's go. All right. Bless us, Lord. Help us. You can hear some things today. You were like, man, that dude there, man. But just stay with me. I'm going to show it to you the word, all right? Yeah. Beginning today and probably for the rest of the year, uh, we're going out there. The first few weeks of the, the uh, first few weeks of this new year, we just, you know, we kind of keeping it close to the vest. But now we're good to go. All right? Now we're good to go on out there. All right? So that's right. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and what? Preach the gospel to who? Every creature. Preacher. Say preach to every creature. Preach he that believe in his baptized shall be saved. Oh, Lord, we'll get into that. But he that believe not shall be what? Damn. Go ye where at into all the world and preach this gospel. Say the gospel. The gospel. The gospel. Preach this gospel to every creature. All right, now, let's see, let's see, let's see. When it comes by the distance, all right, we, we know uh, uh, that God so love who? The world. He love who? The whole world. Yeah. Thank God for, you know, the Jews, Abraham and his descendants. They were used by God to get the word in the earth. They were used by God to get the, uh, the Savior in the earth. But God's ultimate rejection was not just for the Jews to be saved. God so loved who? The whole world. Mm -hmm. And right here he says, now go ye where and to where? All the world. Yes. Not just a certain family. Mm -hmm. He told Abraham, in these shall all families of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every family, every here, name, every kindred, hear it, every color, every all, everyone. God desires for everybody to be saved, for everyone to be what? Blessed. We know that in court of 2 Corinthians, don't turn it there. He said there was God in Christ, what? Reconciling the world unto himself. That was God in Christ doing that. That was God and Jesus doing that, okay? And we know according to 1 John 2, it said, Jesus is the perpetuation of the sins of the whole world. The price for the sins of the whole world has already been paid. No one has to go to hell. Your auntie ain't got to go to hell. All she got to do is what? Receive Jesus. Why? The price has been paid. If anyone goes to hell, it's not because God well, can't believe a loving God was send anyone to hell. He hasn't. If they went to hell, it's because they failed to receive the price that has been paid, which is who? Jesus. Okay? So he says, go ye into all the world. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. We'll go there. 2 Corinthians 5. So go ye into all the world. And as we've been sharing, uh, if you are in Christ, you have a ministry. Say, I have a ministry. I have a ministry. Say, I have a ministry. I have a ministry. Well, I thought that was just a pastor and a prophet and an apostle and a minister. No, baby. Anyone in Christ has a ministry. Yes. Yes. If you're in Christ, you have a ministry. Yes. Therefore, if any man be wrecked, we're at in Christ. See, I'm in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us. The ministry of reconciliation. We all have a ministry. You're not called to sit. You're not called to look. You're not called to be a cheerleader. No, you're called to be in the game. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. You are a minister. Say, I'm a minister. I'm a minister. Well, no, I ain't in no I ain't in no seminary. I ain't so 
talking about the Lord. Eh? I'm talking about call to the ministry of reconciliation. Yes, amen. And that's the that's the that's the my God, the trick of the devil. He got he got majority of the Christ on the sideline thinking they ain't got nothing to do but come to church on Sunday. Oh Lord, help us, God. I, okay, Holy Ghost, I hear you. But Joy in the church is over here chilling. Uh-huh. They need the work of the ministry as the apostle, the prophet, the minister, the pastor, the teacher. No, you are called to be a minister. Yes. Yes. Amen. No one is called to just come to church on Sunday and live their life Monday through Saturday how they want to live. Yes. No, whenever you are Monday through Saturday, well, you are a minister. Amen. Yes. Oh Lord. Yes. Right. Uh-huh. Well, I ain't ordained, pastor. Oh, I love it. 
5 and 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5. Watch this one. Paul said, hey, I ain't coming to our plan on games. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5. Watch this one. Watch what he said. Watch Paul says. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 5. Wow, my Lord. For we preach not ourselves. I ain't, we're not here to preach ourselves. No. Paul said, I'm not. We're not preaching ourselves. Who are we preaching, Paul? We preaching what? Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants. Oh my God, for Jesus' sake. That's what we preach. Well, 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 I want people to get to know me. No, we preach Christ. Our objective is to connect them to Christ. The ministry of reconciliation is not for them to get connected to us. The ministry of reconciliation is for them to get connected to who? To Christ. And once we get them connected to Christ, get out the way and let them court each other. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. We preach Jesus, man. Keep riding. Y'all with me so far? Yeah. So we preach Jesus, right? Yeah. While we preach Jesus, John 1, 14. John 1, verse 14. Stay with me. Mm -hmm. Why do we preach Jesus, Pastor? Why, why, what, what is this about? And the word was made flesh, talking about Jesus, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten Father who look at Jesus, full of what? Grace and truth. Say grace and truth. Grace and truth. Jesus was full of it. Yes. Yes, he was. Full of grace, full of truth. We'll drop down to verse 17. I got it. No, we'll go to start verse 16. And of his fullness that we all receive and grace for grace. Verse 17. Why do we preach Jesus? For the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. All right? Now, pull up my diagram. The, the, number two. Not the first, the second. All right, now stay with me, guys. I have this, I have this unction, and I and I just know God is what He's about to do. But I gotta make sure that we here at Greater Love get this first. The law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. All right. Okay, stay with me. One second. Okay. Now, of course, we know. We know this is the word, word of God. Say, this is the word of God. Word of God. Okay. And, of course, we know this is the word of God. Now, listen. Listen. <laughs> you have to come with your path, okay? Yes. Now, listen. This is the word of God. We know. I know your Bible, you know. We know this Bible consists of two covenants. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We have the Old Covenant, yeah. Yeah. which is Genesis through Malachi. And we have what they call the New Covenant, which they say is from Matthew to Revelation, but that's not quite accurate. Yes. Yeah. Because a covenant can't go into existence until after the blood is shed. Right. Matthew through John, Jesus was still walking in the earth. His covenant didn't go into existence until Acts. And when the Holy Ghost showed up. That's right, amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we'll put Matthew and John right there in the middle. Because okay. in Matthew and John, you're going to find a little bit of the old and a little bit of the new. You see Jesus hopping back and forth. One minute he's talking about old covenant realities, and then he comes in and talking about new covenant realities, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, old covenant. Was, he said the law was given by who? Moses. Grace and truth came by who? Jesus. The old covenant was administered by Moses. New covenant was administered by Jesus. Law, grace. Old covenant, you see works. Everything is based upon your works. New covenant is based upon faith in Christ. The old covenant was based upon what? Flesh. New covenant is based upon what? Spirit. Old covenant will leave you in bondage. New covenant is all about liberty and freedom. The old covenant ordained things unclean. New covenant ordained, ordained things sanctified. 
Saints, I know it's all in the same book. Oh, God, help me, Lord. But this is not all one book. It's a book that contains two covenants. Yes. If you try to if you try to read this book, Lord Jesus, and I know they got reading plans and all that different stuff. If you try to read it from Genesis to Revelation, and you try to mingle these two covenants together, it's going to leave you in a state of confusion. Yes, Amen. But here's the trick. Here's the trick of it all. It's all called the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. And it is. Mm -hmm. But the Word of God in the Old Covenant that was true mm -hmm. may not be the Word of God that is true in the New Covenant. Right. Oh, God. Right. So something that is true out of the Old might not fly in the New. So what you have, Lord, help us, Lord. Lord Jesus. Let's go to Ephesians. Leave that there. I mean, but yeah, leave. Don't worry about going down the picture. But go to Ephesians 4 21. You got to understand where you live. That's right. We live in the new. Yes. Okay, stay with me. Stay with me. We'll, 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 we'll get there. If so be that you have heard him talking about Jesus. And have to be taught by him talking about Jesus. Why? As the truth is in Jesus. Okay, put it back down for a second. Now do it. This is a little box. Okay? The truth is what at? In Jesus, okay? Where do we see the truth at? In Jesus. We have to make sure we're living where we're at. In Jesus. Oh, Lord, okay? And we know the Bible says that you should know the truth, and the truth should what? Make you free. It's dangerous. To be reading the word of God. And we push people to read the word. Mm -hmm. Read your word. Read your word. Read your word. What? What? Read what? The whole the Genesis, the Revelation? What should I be focusing on? Read your word. It doesn't profit a new believer anything to be reading Deuteronomy. Ooh, oh, Lord, right. that was a sinner. Yes, he did. It doesn't. He, he, he's in Christ. The truth is we're at in Jesus. You need to be reading about in Jesus and who you are now that you are in Jesus. Amen. If you want to go and read Deuteronomy at a later time, do that. But right now, you need to be focusing on who you are we're at in Jesus. Amen. The truth is in Jesus. Yes, amen. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth yes. came by Jesus. Yes, amen. First Timothy 2, verse 3. Pray with me. Stay with me and pray with me. I'm going to say some things. Y'all better stay with me, man. Lord Jesus, faithful, no long. I'll pray for him and don't leave me. First Timothy 2, verse 3. For this is good in the sight of the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be what? Saved. Don't just get saved and come to the what? Knowledge of the truth. Where is the truth at? In Jesus. So he said, well, I want you to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. What truth? Of who you are now, you're in with Jesus. What is the truth? He doesn't stop talking. He keep, all you do is keep reading. Come to the knowledge of the truth. What is the truth? For there is one God and one meeting between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. That's the truth. Yeah. Everything you need is in Jesus. Yes. Oh Lord. Amen. Y'all with me so far? Amen. So what is the truth? What is the truth? Matter of fact, go see that John 18, verse 37. What is the truth? Oh Lord. Oh Lord. No, I'm about to holler. What is the truth? John 18, 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Pilate 
devil said unto him, Art thou a king? Then Jesus answered, Thou says I am the king. To this end was I born. For this cause came out to the world. That I should be a witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said, What? Well, what is the truth? <laughs> Pilate, what is truth? What is truth? And that's the that's the that's the that's the thing the world wants is asking, what is the truth? I got I got I got Islam putting me one way, one way, I got I got Jehovah's Witnesses putting me one way, I got the Catholics trying to get me. I I, I mean, when I first got saved, I got everybody, I was like, what is, what is this? I mean, I got the five percenters after me. I'm like, what the world is going on? And everybody is saying that they're preaching what? Truth. Everybody got the truth. Pilate said, what? Well, what is truth? What is it? All right. Here we go. Y'all leave me for a second. I'm going to ask a question. I want y'all to be real with me. How do you believe we should be living by the word of God? Amen. Yes. <laughs> what about you? We should be living by the word. Oh, you know how people get spiritual. I live by the whole counsel of God. You know, I don't know why they're talking about moving shoulders. What is that about? <laughs> <laughs> I live by the whole counsel. Why you got moving shoulders? Move your shoulders on the side. I live by the whole counsel of God. Okay. Whole counsel. Okay. How many of you believe we should be living by the whole, oh, Larry right here, oh, God, the whole word? I do, Pastor. I believe from Genesis to Revelation, we need to be living by every scripture, every jot tittle of the word of God. Oh, that's heavy, man. Yes, it is. You mean from Genesis to Revelation, we're supposed to live by the whole? Some religious 
preacher. Mm -hmm. He take this Leviticus 28. See, see, pastor? Mm -hmm. It says all the statutes. It says all the judgments. You got to what? Do them. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And be up there hollering. Mm -hmm. And sweating. And have the church round and stirred up. And what they don't know is he's teaching them error. Yes. Okay, Pastor, you got to show me this. I'm glad you came. John 8, verse 1. If anybody would know they got to keep all the statues, it would be who? Jesus. Amen. So what do you say to Jesus when he doesn't do all the statues? So you say Jesus sin? No, not my Savior. My Savior is the righteousness of God. My Savior was pure. He could not sin. But right here, we got to read Jesus didn't do something the Father said do. Oh, Lord. Amen. That's right. Jesus went up to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again into the temple. All the people came into him and sat down and he taught them. And the scribe and the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in the dark. To say a woman taken in the dark. Sir. Not only was she taken in the dark, she was caught in the very act. Mm -hmm. They said unto him, Master, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. watch it. This woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay? Listen, just read with me, guys. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Yeah. What did they say? Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Let's go read that first and we're coming back. Let's go read Le uh, Leviticus 20, verse 10. Let's go see where, where, he, where they're quoting it. And then we'll come back to Jesus. And then we get to the verse 10. How do you believe that, that we're supposed to keep all the commands for God? <laughs> uh, no, see, I ain't saying that no more. Oh, no, Pastor, you can trick you all of them. How do you believe you're supposed to keep all the statutes and commands of the Lord? <laughs> and then John and Tittle. Why are you shaking your toe? You got to get the show to say all of it. Show me God, show me <laughs> okay. Can y'all read with me? Come on, man. You want women now? Stay with me now. Let's see what let's see what God said. Let's see what the law of Moses said. And the man that committed adultery with another man's wife, even he that committed adultery with his neighbor's wife and the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Is that the word of God? <laughs> Uh -uh. So y'all play with me right now. Yes. Is that the word of God? Yes. Is that a statue? Is that a command of the Lord? If you find someone in adultery, both the adulterer and the adulterer shall be stoned and put to death. Is that the Bible? <laughs> is that in your Bible? <laughs> is this not in the whole council of God? It's in there. It says in there. You see, it says, it says Leviticus 20 and 10, King James Version. It does not say Raymond 20 and 10. I did not put this in here. I did not write it. All I'm doing is reading what has been uh, written. So, they brought Jesus a woman caught in adultery. For some reason, why did they get the man? I don't know. Must be one of the homies or something. I don't know. They let him know, but they got the woman. Uh-huh. And they brought him to Jesus. They brought him to Jesus. And then let's go back there. Let's go back to uh, John 8. I think it was at verse 4. <coughs> I got it. I got it. Oh, excuse me, sis. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> then they said to them, Master, here we go. This woman taking a dog cheat in the very act. What is supposed to happen to her? Uh-huh. Let's try it again. What is supposed to happen to her? Stone. She's supposed to die today. Yes. Going to Moses. Right. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stone. If if oh God, I hit it. Oh, I'll leave that law. But what you say, Jesus? This they said, tempting him. That they might have.
had to accuse him. Jesus stood down with his finger rolled on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking, he lifted up himself and said unto him, He does without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. And he again stooped down and rolled on the ground. And they which heard it, being con convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, they get at the eldest, even to the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Jesus lifted up himself and saw none but the woman and said unto her, Woman, where are those that are accused? Have no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sit no more. Wait a minute, Jesus. You do not have the right to tell her that. No. Not according to religion. That's right. Not according to some of these sweaty pastors that's preaching right now. She is supposed to be stoned. Kill her. Stone her. What did he do? Go. Say no more. That's not the statue of the Lord. That's not according to Leviticus 20. What? Gives Jesus the right to disobey the commands and statutes of God written down in the law of Moses. Jesus said, and John again, he said, well, the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, thank God for grace. Yes, Lord. What happens when the law? Oh, what is it? What happened? The word of God, the word of God, given by the law of Moses, and the word of God that came forth by Jesus don't flow together. Mm -hmm. There are things that are truth under the old that are not truth under the new. That's right. And I'll be honest with you. I said the statement, y'all, and, and I felt the tightness. Did Pastor just say he don't live by the whole Bible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pastor said that. Mm -hmm. But let me take it a step further. You don't either. Amen. That's okay. right. That's right. Amen. Let me take it a step further. And the ones preaching it don't. Amen. Amen. That's why I said it. Mm -hmm. Amen. They, they trying to tell you live by the whole council, but they're not doing it. Oh, How dare that young man say that stuff? I said it. And I stand by it. <laughs> Pastor, what do you mean? What do you mean I don't believe the whole council? What do you mean I don't live by the whole Bible? Well, just, just be patient. Look at Leviticus 20, verse 13. Let me come a little closer to you. Verse 13. All right, y'all ready? All right, about to get tight in here, but y'all stay with me. I give it all the word. Yeah. Okay. How many of you know someone that practice homosexuality? That, that should be hard. Every day. I've been playing that. I got John down the street. I work with Tyrone. Tyrone been playing that. You, 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 you know plenty of people. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Don't look around. So don't play with me right now. Do not look around. How many of you know people who are in homo who are homosexuals who practice homosexuality? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I know people. How many got in the loved ones? Oh Lord. Yes. All right. Y'all ready? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what the whole council says. <laughs> If a man also lies with mankind, so if a man lies with another man, as he's supposed to be lying with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely put to death, their blood shall be upon them. Where are men at? I believe the whole council, but yet you got the homosexual leading your choir. <gasps> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Place 
from the whole council, you was going to drag them out and stone them. How are they still leading your choir? Well, well, well. No, no, well, well, me. How do you, what right do you have to pick and choose what you want to obey? Well, 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 pastor. No, see, they try to backslide out of it. You try to teach people to live by the whole council. What well, live by it then? That's right. Amen. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Come upon this. Anyone that's homosexual, lesbian, they're supposed to die. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just, just 
just unclean. Give me the story. <laughs> Do you realize you coming to church on your cycle? That's a no no. You're supposed to be put apart for seven days. We're supposed to see you for a whole week. So you get yourself together. You don't come in here sitting up in the hall for God on your cycle. Uh, 
mixed with beef, pork, and chicken. Oh no. Not the swine. He is unclean unto you. What? And the saints go stand and live by the whole council of God and go to go to Corral today and eat all kinds of swine. Huh? That ham? You ain't gonna really eat that and you gonna live by the whole council? That's, That's unclean to you. Yeah. Oh Lord. Uh -huh. Oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord. You know ham savage? You know ham no, no, no. That's unclean out of you. Well, pastor, well, pastor. Don't well pastor me. You don't have the right to pick and choose what you will live by. That's right. And you wanna live by the whole council, live by. Put that ham up, put it down. <laughs> No, you don't believe that for real. You don't believe that by the whole council. You just said it to be spiritual. Mm -hmm. He said, leave that swine alone. Mm -hmm. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch, because they are what? Unclean to you. If you live by the whole council, you have no reason, no business eating a pork chop. Right. Smelling it and graving. Mm. Leave it alone. Mm. You you live at the whole council. You don't have no, you can't, you shouldn't be touching it. Mm. Let's keep reading. Here we go. These shall eat up that are in the waters. Oh, Lord. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters and the seas and in the rivers, them you shall eat. Yeah. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, and all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, you shall it shall be an abomination unto you. Oh. They shall even be an abomination to you. You shall not eat of their flesh, but you shall have their carcass in, in, in abomination. Yeah. Your shrimp, mm -hmm. your crab legs, oh. your lobsters. Whosoever have no fans nor scales in the waters, they shall be an abomination to you. Do not let me catch you eating no shrimp fried rice, Bishop. <laughs> oh my God. Don't you let me catch you eating no crab eggs. Mm -hmm. Mr. I live by the whole council of God. You do that. So let's see. Let's see. We, 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 we examine adultery, mm -hmm. homosexuality, rebellious kids, your menstrual cycle, your pork, your crab legs, your shrimp. Oh, that's off limits. Whole council. You live by the whole council. That's an abomination of you. <laughs> Let's go see another one. Genesis 17. <laughs> how do you how do we talk? You won't go no further. How do you glad we ain't under that law? Yeah. I mean, why, God, why, do we, why do we want to be why do we want to spend time with that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Genesis 17, verse 10. Now y'all stay with me now. I live in the whole council. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your seed after me. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Oh, God. <sighs> and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and there should be a token of the covenant between me and you. If you live by the whole council. Now, I'll be real with you. Now stay with me. We have altar calls here. We have an altar call. You can be saved. We pray for healing, marriage. We even pray for you know if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. I've never went to a church 
And, they, and part of the altar call was, is there anyone here today who needs to be circumcised? No. No. If you're not saved, you come in this line. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say you come here? Need healing over here? Need circumcision? Come over here. <laughs> Have you ever been to a church and did that? No. Are we even inquiring whether or not people are circumcised? No. We're not asking people, hey, brother, are you circumcised? <laughs> Hey, 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 homeboy. That's messed up. That's between you and the Lord. Have you, 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 you been circumcised yet? You want to get this covenant? Come on down. <laughs> we don't do that, do we? No. no. Why? Well, well, Pastor, that's an old covenant. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yes. Stop trying to mix the covenants together. Yes, amen. What a man. Matter of fact, let's read that. Let's go to uh, Galatians 5, verse 1. <clears throat> That's what I'm trying to let you know today. Stop the mingling. Paul says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty whereby Christ has made us free. Thank God for Jesus. And be not entangled again with that yoke of bondage. Paul, behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you be circumcised, because they were trying to tell them you're not saved if you don't get circumcised. Paul said, if you're going to circumcise Christ, your prophet, you nothing. Uh -huh. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that if you're going to get circumcised, Paul said, then you got to live by the whole law. Yeah, right. All that mess we just said, uh -huh. if you feel like, oh, I got to get circumcised so I can be in the covenant, Paul said, okay, but then you live by all of it in. Uh -huh. Christ has become more effective than you, who some of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Here as he says, for, through, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Watch what he said. For in Jesus Christ, wait a minute. We just saw God say anyone that's going to be in covenant with me has to be circumcised. Paul said that Jesus Christ neither circumcision nor better than anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith in Christ which work by love. I don't care if you've been chopped or not chopped, Paul said. You are the righteous of God if you believe in Jesus. Jesus, man. In Jesus, Paul says circumcision means nothing. Well, Pastor. Well, Pastor. He says circumcision in Christ. Circumcision of him. Or what says circumcision mean of nothing? But that's part of the, that's that's the strength of an old covenant. But he said, but in Jesus, it means nothing. It is circumcised or not, it don't matter. As long as you got faith in Christ, which is manifest by your love. And you got people walking around for they gotta get circumcised or whatever. Live, love. Mm. That's all right for your baby. Mm. Well, you know, if it's June Bull 35, you talk about circumcised June Bull, June Bull, and all. I'm good. Mm. <laughs> we don't live by the whole Bible. Again, we don't live by the whole Bible. We don't live by the whole Bible. Do we believe the whole Bible is the Word of God? It is. But there's two different covenants. And if you look at them, they're completely opposite from one another. Look at them. They ain't doing anything. They don't flow together at all. So what gives us the right, man? Two scriptures.
is when I'm finished. Hebrews 2, verse 9. Then we're going to Ephesians 1 when we finish. What gets us to write? To decide which part we're going to keep and which part we're not. Just saying that. I already hear that. And Bishop, don't put no, don't put no comment on our post. If you don't agree with it, just keep writing. Yeah. Just keep scrolling up. Yeah. You know what I'm telling you? Yeah. But, 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 but. <laughs> What gives? Let me just say me. I ain't gonna say us. What gives me the right to say? Yes. I believe the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't live by the whole Bible. What gives me that right? I see Jesus. I can see Jesus. But we see Jesus, who has made a little Lord and an angel for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he might, by the, that he by the grace of God, should taste death for who? Every man. Then to keep on reading. For it became him from whom all things, and by whom all things, and, and bringing many sons of glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctifies and he who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them what? Brethren. Saying, I will declare your name unto my brother and the rest of the church, will I what sing praise unto thee. What is it that allows me to go and read anything I want in the old covenant? I can go read Hosea, Chronicles, Kings, Samuel, Judges, and I can read something. No. I see Jesus. And the only way you can get caught up in this, these false teachings, false doctrines, is you try to read the Bible without seeing Jesus. Amen. You got, you literally, I like how, who was it? Uh, I think it was what, uh, what did my teacher say? You got to really read the Bible with your Jesus glasses on. Don't just pick up this book and try to read it. Make sure when you're reading, you're looking through Jesus. And this is how you get clarity. If you try to read this through the domination, religion, or tradition, you'll be living in some stuff you ain't got no business done with. That's right. We see Jesus, man. Say, I see Jesus. I see Jesus. And I thank God I see Jesus. I've been looking at that law, man, and I'm still doing research on it. I wanted the whole law before me. I wanted to see the, what the whole law was about, man. The law was given by Moses. I want to see all what it's about. And the one who I was reading, I can say this has nothing to do with the church at all. This is for a select nation. He said, I want you to be set apart for me. Why in the world did we try to bring it over to the church? It has nothing to do with us. If you don't see Jesus properly and understand the truth about what he has done, you're going to find yourself living back and under things that has nothing to do with your salvation. Last scripture and I'll finish. Ephesians 1 verse 13. Amen. Amen. Listen to me, man. I I listen. Because if, you, if you're sitting under that stuff and you're learning that stuff, it brings you right back into bondage. We'll get into this part next Sunday. We started off a little bit talking, what is the truth? He said, in whom you also trusted. After that you heard what? The word of truth. What is the word of truth? The gospel of your salvation. What or not you eat pork chops have nothing to do with your salvation. Amen. Uh oh. Can I say that, Lord? Oh, God. If you 
you commit adultery for it doesn't mean you're going to hell. Amen. All right, now. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Amen. Oh, Lord. Take it out. Oh, Lord. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. 
I don't believe it. I don't live by it, man. Amen. You, if you feel like you live by the Bible, go ahead. But I can't. Amen. I can't do it. Amen. So, Pastor. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. I, I got to stop, Lord. So, Pastor, are you saying? Are you saying, Pastor, that people that are saved still sin? Yes. You better hope. Listen, let me tell you something. Yes, yes they do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want no gospel no. Where, where you can be saved and still see sin in your life. Yes, you do, baby. Yes. Because you still do. Uh -huh. Yes, you do. So, so what you just said is you don't want a gospel where you need grace. You you want a gospel where where your good works is what's going to qualify you. No, baby. You need a gospel that makes room for your mess ups. Yes. You know what I'm telling you? You need a gospel where you don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be perfect. Why? He was perfect. Amen. And both he that is sanctified and he that is sanctified are all one. My Amen. God, that's the gospel. Amen. Hey, buddy, if you're not saved, let's get saved today. My <laughs> 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 God, I've never heard that part of the altar call. <laughs> Circumcised, come on now. We need to be circumcised, we got you. Blaze a shop that's running around. We don't do that. Because we know, we know, we know in us that what they're circumcised or uncircumcised doesn't matter. That's right. If we know that for our services, then why are we trying to mix everything else then? Right. Right. All right, hey, we need to say, man, come on, man. This I have a person to do here. I just told you to pray for me. Listen, listen. All the stuff you heard, thank God for all of it. Listen, I'll tell you. Grace and truth came by Jesus. Okay? Listen. It's all about him, man. All we're trying to do this year is help everyone see Jesus. Salvation comes through Jesus. Yes. And, and all you got to do is believe the gospel. Yes. Yes. That Jesus has already paid a price for yes. all of your sins. Believe that. Yes. And when you believe that, you are sealed yes. with the Holy Spirit of promise. Yes. And as we did during communion, and when Jesus come back, we said, come Lord Jesus, come when he come. Guess what? You're going with him. Amen. 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 But pastor, I haven't done everything right. You're not listening. It's not about your works. It's not about you doing everything right. It's about your faith in Jesus. Just believe, man. Just believe. But pastor, I'm still struggling with weed. He got you. Your weed addiction ain't stronger than the grace of God. So right now, just repeat after me, my brother, my sister, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's do it. Let's make the devil out of a lie. He, let me tell you something about the devil. He's trying to take it to hell. Mm -hmm. Right now, he's telling you he ain't got to do all that. You know? He's trying to take as many people to hell with him as possible. Mm -hmm. And I encourage you, jump out of there. <laughs> Get off that bus, buddy. Come on over to Team Jesus, amen. amen. So just repeat me, say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I thank you. For your grace, for your, grace. For your mercy, for your, mercy. For, your for your blood. And I thank you, I thank you. for saving me. For saving me. When you said in your word. You said in your word. If I confess with my mouth, Jesus be my Lord. Jesus be my Lord. Believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. You say it. I'll be saved. So right now, Lord Jesus, I ask you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Take this life and do something with it. I'm yours, Lord. And I thank you forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 My God, welcome to the family.
Awesome week on this week full of God's goodness, favor, and blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. amen.